Welcome to Ubuntu Essence. I am because you are the essence of being human in service to rekindle the flame of humanity. Hello my loves, welcome to another episode of Ubuntu Essence podcast. I am your host Sasha Marie Allen and today I have a really special guest with me. Her name is Anya, she's from Austria. I met her here in Tulum and she's going to share with us a story of struggle that she's been through throughout high school and university of moments and depression and burnout and struggling with perfectionism and being the best so she's going to share with us the tools that she used and how now she uses that in her daily life to become a more peaceful loving kind version of herself I hope you enjoy her heart medicine as much as I do. <laughs> Welcome, Anya. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to have you here on my podcast and for people to feel your energy and your light just by being who you are, just by sharing um, your smile, your, your eye gaze. I feel people will just benefit just from that. <laughs> they click and they feel you. It's like, okay. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's an honor. And it's an honor to be your friend too mm. and to have met you. And I feel um, you have a lot to share in terms of your journey up till now. And I feel like you will be, you already are so powerful, but you will be, way 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 more powerful every step you 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 taking but i just want to go back to to one of the moments in your life that you felt was really challenging for you and how was your environment how was your mindset how was your way of being how was your spirituality during that process to help you rise mm. thank mm. you so much mm. um yeah, so I'm so, so happy to be sharing this with you uh, and everyone who loves you. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was always a very extrovert person, at the same time a very ambitious, tense, perfectionist person. And just, uh, I would say the best way to describe it is, I want to be everybody's darling. I want to be loved, I want Anya to come somewhere and everyone be like, oh yeah, I love her, oh she's amazing, oh she's the best. And yeah, the last word was important. She's the best. I needed to be the best at everything I did. And so as I started school, I even primary school, first year, I was studying. Like I was studying a lot. And um, then when I, when I reached about 10 years old, it got to a point where I was already really stressed. Every time there was a test, I got a fever when there was a maths test and I knew, didn't know the answer to one question. And my teacher actually measured it and I, I had a fever because I was so internally stressed um, and felt so much pressure which is funny because my parents put no pressure on me whatsoever they were the most open-minded uh, parents I could have asked for and they were actually trying to calm me and telling me calm down take a break play be a child I was a child whenever I had my, finished my homework and whenever everything went the way I had planned for it, but whenever there was something I could not control or something that didn't go the way I wanted it to, I was really tensed up. And so when I turned 14, it was kind of a turning point because school got harder, um, there were more classes, there were just the quantity of work increased a lot. And there were many, many, many tests, a quantity I'd never had before in my school. And yeah, I, people didn't believe me at the time, but now looking back, I know that I had my first burnout at 14. Every time I didn't get 100%, I would like panic and, and cry and sit, just sit tensed up in every class in case a teacher would ask me a question I couldn't answer. Um, and yeah, so it reached a moment when I couldn't work anymore. I was in my room, I was studying, but oh, I was telling everyone I was going to study. I was cancelling on every other activity, 
but I wasn't studying. I was sitting there desperate. I couldn't work. I was blocked. And that's, I mean, yeah, the, later on in my life, I, uh, I came into that same point and then I, I noticed what it was. But at this point, I was just confused. I was 14 years old and I was hating myself even more for then not working and then feeling guilty, going to bed in this like guilty mindset of being, oh, now I didn't work. Now tomorrow I have to cancel again. So it was this big, like big vicious circle I kind of got lost in. Luckily, my parents noticed that and around the same time, my father was kind of going through the same process in his work. There was a parallel which I wasn't able to see, but he was. And so we talked a lot. We had a very open communication. My family and my parents were telling me, sweetheart, take a break, sweetheart. And they took me to different like walks in the forest and connecting with nature and took me to see different coaches and people who uh, try to open my mindset to the fact that maybe there's more to life than what I'm seeing right now. And maybe uh, really what everyone tells you and when you're in school, you don't believe it, but like this one grade isn't that important. Um, through this connection to nature and through these older, wiser people telling, like showing me that it, something else is possible, I was already like being opened up to that, but I wasn't at this point fully, fully open to it, to be honest. But I, st I still think I benefited a lot from it and it just took my mind off something, off the school because I, I allowed my parents to come in and be like, because I, I noticed I can't continue like that. Like every time, mm. just every weekend, just not doing anything, not, not, not loving my life, not loving who I was becoming also because I couldn't see my friends and I couldn't be a good friend. It's not that I was mean, but I was just not receptive. I couldn't listen to anyone because I was so in my own bubble. And then, um, also very lucky for me, I had an amazing dance teacher. And in dance, I had also had this, mm -hmm. of course, I brought the perfectionism in. I was like, I have to be the best here. And mm. so it wasn't the perfect channel for me. But this dance teacher then told me, yeah, actually, I also offer acting classes. And that scared, <laughs> that scared me a lot because like improvisation and acting was not something I had done before. And it's not something I thought I was good at. Um, and it wasn't always in front of many people I didn't know. Um, and so this teacher one day decided in the dance class, okay, we're going to do acting now. Oh, I panicked. I, I wanted to go out and everything, but I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to do this. Like I'm here, so I can't run away. I can't hide on the toilet. So I just did it. I jumped into it. I hated it at the beginning, but I, I just jumped right in. And so every week going to the dance class, I was like, I had to prepare myself mentally being like, okay, I might be acting today, going straight into that fear. And my mom, like I was talking to my mom and I was like shaking and nervous. And she's like, is this really beneficial? But I was, I felt like something inside me just, you have to go, even though I really didn't want to, but something called me was like, this is exactly what you should be doing. My mom didn't really understand at that point. My mom was like, you're already so stressed, like, why are you doing this? Like, this is not beneficial that you take you to the forest. I'm like, no, I'm going acting. <laughs> so I went every single week. I was really scared every single week, but it got better and better. Then at some point I was like, okay, maybe I'm going to go to the children's class. So I went with the really little children and I acted with them because it was like, okay, this week I was a tough week at school. So I'm going to take it easy on myself and do it in front of people where I feel maybe more comfortable. Mm -hmm. And so it got to a point where I was going into that fear all the time and helping me to see that there can be a lot learned and a lot of benefit in doing something not for the purpose of being the best. So it was the first time I did that and, and I, had, I had fun. I had fun being playful. I had fun being bad at something because I was never truly an amazing actress. I, I very often like switched my role while I was while I was improvising and everything so it wasn't that I was good at something but for the first time I was just experimenting and just allowing myself to play really and not mm. in front of people and that's also something maybe by myself I would have allowed myself but in front of the eyes of other people um, and I think that was a that was a huge 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 step um, and so I did this dance four times a week um, then the whole school year and that really that was really my channel and because I started then loving it and loving, I took this kind of simplicity or this lightness, this feeling of lightness into my dance. And so I was like, oh, it's fine. I don't have to be the best. They know how bad my acting is, so I don't have to try so hard with my dancing anymore. And so this really became this channel of like, this is where I let go. 
this is where I just feel free. And I still wanted to perform well at school, but it was so important for me that I want that I, I could get the dancing in and I needed rest, I needed sleep. So I knew I just had a limited amount of time in the afternoon to do to do my, my homework and to work on school. So I was I was like, okay, I then that's my priority and so that means that I can like put some of the pressure off because I know that if my grades get a bit worse I got the dance for it so it I won't be that mad at myself I won't be hurt I won't be very disappointed what actually happened is my grades didn't get worse they got better because I was just focused and I wasn't focused on the grade I was just focused in what I was doing because mm. I was had a really full schedule but I had a certain lightness to my life suddenly and um, that was extremely beautiful to see that going into this fear and allowing myself to play and be a, more of a child at 14 maybe for the first time in a very long time was actually part of my healing my 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 pressure my perfectionism and my burnout um and my little depression that came from that so that was a really 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 beautiful and big step um in 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 my life at that point and i remember that when when it happened to me at 14 uh, I was really angry at life. I was like, why is this happening? I worked my butt off since I was six years old, since I was in school. There was not one thing I didn't do when it, some, someone, either for my friend or my teachers, I would never say no, there was nothing I wouldn't do. And why is life now giving me a burnout? Like, that's not fair. So I was so angry. And so I think a big part um, was also in, but that only, like that happened in the process of when I was going into this acting and dancing and, and releasing all of this, that I stopped being mad at life and started to say, wow, the burnout was good. That, that, was, that was great that it happened to me. And, and that, was a, that was a big step that I wasn't, was no longer perceiving myself as being a victim, but like saying, wow, this empowered me. This allowed me to go into something I would have never done otherwise. And this brings me so much, uh, so much more later in my life. And then through my school career, I had to learn many other lessons. It wasn't over then, but, but that was the first step. And I'm so, so grateful it happened so early. Uh, and I, yeah, so now when, when even up, up until today, I think um, now when something bad happens, of course, I get frustrated still. But I have this, sometimes I have this like this spark inside me telling me something great is coming, mm -hmm. something great is coming to you. And that makes me get up even when it's really not good and I'm really not motivated and I'm really not feeling my best. Yeah, wow. I, I can relate to that so much. Thank you for sharing. That's so powerful because I feel a lot of us recovering perfectionists out there have this feeling like it's the end of the world and I don't feel like it's being uh, this I don't know if you relate to this but being the best it's not even like about the others mm. it's just about ourselves because if we don't come num number one then we are not worthy right it's like then what what's even the point mm -hmm. and it it brings a lot of that that like self-esteem and and self-worth uh, really really down and just making life as a competition with everything and being so judgmental and critical with ourselves it's it's an exhausting process Mm -hmm. So it's amazing that you found it throughout this connection with nature and also want you to dive deeper then into into the environment and, and the spirituality and the connection mm -hmm. and a bit beyond that because I feel that's what that's what gives mm -hmm. the strength, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, maybe I can when I when I go into this, I can just uh, go into a later point of my life because Obviously, I had learned part of the lesson that um, when I organize myself well and I give myself other reasons not to make school that important, it gets better. But I hadn't solved the problem itself, uh, which was me just needing to prove myself mm -hmm. in every single moment that I had entered the school building. Um, and so when at 14, I had already met some spiritual coaches and um, my dad was going into that direction. So he gave me some insights. And I remember hearing 
things like you're exactly where you need to be mm -hmm. and um, everything happens for a reason and things will come to you at the right time and see everything in your life as a chance but at 14 to be very honest I didn't grasp that like it was there it was a beautiful quote that I put on my wall mm -hmm. but I didn't understand it um, and then so I had to dive into another one of those experiences at 17 when um, my my academic career was like taking its maybe biggest turn because I was really I was in a program where I was very very challenged um, and had so many hours of, of school every week and I wanted to do the very best in every assignment and I just I burnt out again because I was just so into it and I just couldn't stop myself and um, I, I was really deep 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 in, in this big shadow and this big hole actually um, and then I, I started doing different uh, different coachings with my dad. My dad helped me uh, like helped me kind of uh, climb out of that hole as well. But it was more I was very dependent on him. So like every time mm. I, something bad happened, I would call him and be like, "Okay, I need your advice right now," which was which was beneficial, which was amazing. Um, but I still think. I, I didn't fully dive into my spirituality at this point because I was like, yeah, I have this person I can, like I was just drowning, drowning my, my sorrows in him and passing it all on to him. Okay, it's fine, go on to the next thing. So it was more like on a practical level. I still hadn't, hadn't formed my connection also to mother nature very well. Like it, I was there, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm relaxed right now, but I, I hadn't begun even to understand the power of my mind and my thoughts and everything. What was really beautiful then was a, small coping mechanism I developed um, that I was just like st studying in groups. So that really helped me to have a social connection and um, uh, be, be with people and still studying. So not, mm. uh, not sacrifice my, my performance, but yeah. also have some social interaction. So then I found the study groups and that's how I kind of got uh, through my, through my uh, last school year. And then I think there were two more experiences I really needed to go through to uh, fully understand, okay, that cannot be it. The one was my final final exam in school, in maths. Mm -hmm. We have different exams in every, in every um, different class we take. And my maths exam was earlier than the others. Uh, so only uh, already in January and I only graduated in uh, July. Mm -hmm. And um, so I got, a, I got the second best grade and I missed the <laughs> best grade by one point. I was, I was very, devastated and very disappointed because it was the one time I didn't achieve it and it was the final exam it was the one time where it was like important and then I was like okay this there, there must be more to it than that so I started I stopped working for school I was like no I'm gonna do something else but then I lost myself in partying so then also I didn't go into spirituality and then um, I, I think it's very hard for me to pinpoint the moment where it happened but I think it was like a a number of moments where my efforts and all the hard work I had put in didn't even lead to the expected result and without the hard work I would have put in I would have landed at exactly the same destination mm -hmm. and then with hindsight in just a few months after my graduation when I was just not in school anymore in a different environment I noticed that this maybe wasn't wasn't the most important thing in my life or wasn't wasn't something that was gonna fulfill me because every time I got a good grade I was like one moment and next moment oh okay okay well yeah that's normal for me now so it didn't I didn't I was looking for something to fill me up and mm. it was only so, so moment it's like such a small moment every time and um, then um, I my last burnout was kind of in in university still um, and that was like during the pandemic and uh, me being online, being at home, being alone, not seeing a point in anything I was doing. Whenever I was around people, when I was mm. in my study group, I could ignore that. But when I was alone in my room and just reading what I was reading, I was like, suddenly, I don't, what am I doing? This is, and I just, I really had this sensation hit me. Well, what's the point of my life? Mm. Why am I here? And it seemed so pointless mm. suddenly what I was, what I'd been doing all this time. Everything I've been telling you, like one math exam, one, one paper I wrote for politics. Like, what is this? So I went, I went into that was less of a burnout and more of a depression actually. Like I c couldn't get out of bed. I mm. 
and and then um, my I found yoga. I found um, some spiritual teachers, some coaches, um, some German coaches that did um, a four week program. So I did different kinds of programs that I started within two weeks because I was like, I've known this. It's maybe not exactly the same that I've experienced, but I've known this a few times in my life. So I've got to act now. I'm not going to drown in mm -hmm. this. I need to act now. So I was the one who approached my father and was like, do you have recommendations? Is there something I can do? Is there something I can dive into right now? Uh, and so I started working on myself. I started um, getting up earlier, doing my yoga, doing my meditations, doing uh, and doing a practical life course, I would say, with a German coach who, uh, who, who mm -hmm. let me Mm. repeat my affirmations every morning and do one task every single day which was not just because I think like it's very nice to do, go on YouTube and do meditation videos and now that I'm, I'm kind of more experienced with this it's enough for me to go on YouTube put on some music and go into my own space but I, I really needed someone to guide me through it and I also needed the discipline because I mm. think um, self-discipline is a form of self-love in mm. some aspects and especially when you go into this it's about building a routine it's about challenging what you know and so this uh, this coach really helped me to to build up a routine for four weeks I was in this program and so for four weeks every day I had a video with him and every day I had something I had to send it's what it was a big program so it wasn't somebody that was going to check it but I knew I had to send something I, there was something I was I owe to someone exactly this accountability. So, so this this four week journey that I did right after a few days actually after I was feeling like I was going into a depression, completely changed me. Uh, and I noticed a week after a week into this class when my brother told me, "You're you're a different person," you know, mm -hmm. like you you don't like that's insane how this changed you. This is incredible. Uh, and I was because the week before I was crying I was lying on the couch crying and the week after I was dancing in the living room I was like I have a vision this is this light there's so much more to life than this I changed I started changing up my whole life my whole belief system because I had connected to something deeper inside and what helped me with, with this was sports in nature it was this connection of moving my body which helped me to switch off my brain for a second mm. and stop this vicious circle of thoughts and also watching my thoughts and the way I did this was through the affirmations that I had like one day what my my goal or my only challenge was see everything as a gift in every situation you get in this day ask yourself where is my gift and so I was running through the forest and I was like yeah this is my real life so of course that's a gift I mean huh yeah. and yeah. then next to it there were shots being fired because mm. the forest was there's like this shot game station mm. close to it and usually when I go there and it happens at the same time I get so annoyed like I'm like why this is happening now I'm in my safe space this is my zen zone and I was like oh wait a second where's the gift and in, in a matter of seconds I was like yeah this is allowing me to to really to test me and be my be my teacher and be like are you really that zen mm. does it come from you is it you that's zen or is it because it's if it's just the forest then you need the forest but make yourself independent from anything around you and just find it in you yeah. and so with everything um in this that's just one example of mm. how this class really day by day changed my life and it created routines that i that i just stuck to or that i actually built up upon so it was it was a beautiful beautiful thing to witness um, and maybe something that, that that was even like the not the final stage of my healing the healing healing is an ongoing process mm. but it was a beautiful big step in my healing when my headmistress the headmistress of my university mm. who had known what I was going through also talked to me and and saw me and was like oh it seems like you really found your way out and you saw that mm. there's something something bigger to this um, so I actually want to ask you, we have quite many students right now um, in our first year who, who are struggling. Can you help them? Can you mm. be their mentor? And I was so honored. I was so, <laughs> I, I was so surprised. Mm. But at the same time, I wasn't surprised mm. because a week before that, I had a vision. It was one of my first visions where I was, I was dancing and I, I was on a stage and I was like passing on this lesson there's more to life than this mm. everyone let loose and I was like yes oh my god mm. I can do something like this there's other things I can do I don't have to do a 
traditional career. There's so much yeah. else I could do with my life. And a week later, it's made, not that this is exactly mm. it, but it, it's a start. And I was yes. so I was so happy. And ever since then, I've been I've been um, mentoring some students mm. from my old university. Mm. And it's also it's beautiful because I can pass on what I learned. In another sense, it's also beautiful to see how far away from their problems I am. Mm. Because every time they tell me, I can tell them, oh, I know what you're going through, but I, I'm so distanced and it doesn't touch me. It doesn't in any way that I need to think about my problems because I, I've resolved that and I'm, I'm truly, yeah. I'm a calm person. And even my friends from university, my friends from school, if you ask, yeah, Anya's a stressed person. Like she's so, my friends from university, Anya's the calmest person I know. Like <laughs> she's just pure peace and she's, nothing can stress her out. And it's so <laughs> funny and it's so, it's so yeah. beautiful to see wow. that. That's so amazing. We've we've touched so many important topics, which is the foundation of what I believe is the healing, right? Allowing ourselves to be playful, to to connect with our creativity, our inner child, um, nature, and the importance of also having this structure and knowing that having this it's not a way of like feeling that it's ugh so dull and everything but that it's just a way it's like everything in the beginning we just need time and and organization around that and how that is so loving for ourselves so it's amazing that you've gotten through all of these tools and how that really helps Right, right, as building a more loving, loving way of being to self. Mm. So thank you so much. What is the, um, like a word, a phrase or a recommendation that you would tell someone or you tell your, your, your students that you were mentoring um, when in the initial phases of their blockages? Mm. The one thing I tell everyone in the first, the first time I meet them and every time they fall back into their worst mm. pattern or their worst despair, I'll tell them, I was there. I was exactly where you were. And believe me, believe me, one day you're going to look back like me and be so happy that you were in this place. Because I can say with full honesty that these are the best things that happened to me in my life. Mm. These are the best, best moments. So if you know that and if you believe me trust that and feel grateful feel already grateful because that's the only way you can grow be grateful for the challenge and embrace it in that moment hug it in take it in instead of fighting it because it can teach you so much especially if you're so young but at any point in your life so that's that's something i tell them because i i think if we stop the resist or if we release the resistance and start accepting it we can learn the value, the most valuable lessons. And then if we just take a step back and stop judging what's happening and just take the situation as it is and see what we can mm. do from it. It's that's something I know that's a phrase. I'm going to use a phrase from you now, but I, I've also been applying it mm. or putting it into my, my mentorings. It's through the biggest shadow that you step into your biggest light. Mm. So knowing that gives you so much strength in this dark moment. And it's really, it's this, little I, I always see it as a little star in my heart that that helps me shine even and that's always there that can never be touched even in the darkest moment mm. yeah so mm, so beautiful <laughs> thank you thank you and so much such a rock star she doesn't, <laughs> she doesn't have social media for now but when she's gonna put her work out into the world for sure she's gonna <laughs> find a way to reach the world with her love and peace and wisdom and when that happens we'll be sure to keep you posted <laughs> <laughs> thank, you thank you so, so much, much for much. having me Sasha. my loves thank you so much for tuning in i hope that you enjoyed this episode and that it brought you the comforting that you needed. I will see you in the next episode. I love you.